Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at backing up uh, on server. And we're going to talk specifically this week about how do you back up the server itself. Now we've already covered in a previous screencast how to use the Time Machine service that's built into server. And again, that service is used to back up client machines uh, to your server or to a drive attached to your server. And so I covered all of the details of that. Well, this week we're going to talk about how do you actually back up the server itself? What are some of the various strategies you can use for that? As well as how do you back up some of the important information uh, that you have in server uh, to make sure that that's available just in case you have an issue or something gets corrupted or you need to do a reinstall. So what I'll do is let's just start with the server itself. Let me just put this down here. And we're going to pull up System Preferences. Now, obviously, built into server, just like any other Mac, is the Time Machine service that we have right here. Now, Time Machine is, again, designed to give hourly incremental backups. So it's going to incrementally backup your server uh, and everything on it so that uh, if you needed to go back in time to find a deleted file or something like that, you could go back to a specific point in time and restore your server. And so like I said, Time Machine's built into all of your client machines and uh, in the previous screencast we covered how to set up a client and it's the same way with your server. You just come in, select a backup disk, you know, from one of your backup disks you have here and once you select it you click use disk and then turn the service on and it would start to back up. So that's one way to do that. Now, as you're looking at backing up your server, you're going to want to have a uh, probably have a dedicated drive to do that uh, because Time Machine will take up all of the space that's available on a drive. And then once it runs out of space, it starts deleting the oldest backup. So you may want to have a drive that's attached to that. Now, I've, I've mentioned earlier that I have a Drobo. And uh, one of the things you probably want to do, uh, depending on your Drobo, some of the Drobos, like if you have a uh, Drobo 5N, which is a network attached storage, built into the um, Drobo dashboard, you have the ability to limit the size of Time Machine backups. And that's something that you would definitely want to do uh, if you're backing up to a, you know, a network attached drive. Uh, I have a Drobo that's actually attached directly to the server, so there isn't, uh, you know, there isn't a direct way to do that. It'll just keep backing up. And so on those kinds of drives, you either want to partition the space so that uh, Time Machine doesn't take it all up, or you, like I said, you just get another dedicated drive and put it on there. And the rule of thumb is generally uh, you want a drive that's uh, double the size of your server hard drive or one that maybe is double and a half, uh, depending on just how far back in time you think you're going to want to go with the backup. So that's one of the things that you can do right away is use the built-in Time Machine service. So let's just pop this down here for a minute. And let me just pull up uh, this web page here. And so the next thing I want to talk about is an application called SuperDuper. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do with your server is you're probably going to want to have a clone uh, of your boot drive, of the main drive that your server operates on. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, the, the first reason is just to have an exact copy of that drive uh, available as a great backup. Okay, So it's not an incremental backup, but it's an exact copy of everything you've got on the drive. Uh, the other thing is, is you can actually boot from uh, this particular copy. Uh, meaning that uh, if your internal drive goes down and you really need to you know, get your server up and running quickly, you could actually boot from your backup drive and have your server up and running as if everything, as if nothing happened to the main drive. Uh, it also gives you the opportunity to uh, be able to uh, change the internal drive on, on your server and then boot from this external drive and then restore back to your internal drive to get everything back to exactly where it was before. So it really is a great uh, opportunity to have uh, this kind of program running for you. Now, uh, SuperDuper uh, allows you to actually back up for free. So you can actually make a clone of your main hard drive and it won't cost you anything. But if you want to do, if you want to make uh, you know these backups on an ongoing basis and schedule it, which you probably are going to want to do, and I recommend that because we forget all the time, uh, then you'll want to buy uh, an actual copy, and it's it's twenty seven ninety five uh, for this application. But uh, in my opinion, it's well worth it. It does a great job, uh, and I haven't had any problems with it, so I highly recommend it. Uh, another one you could do uh, use as well uh, if you didn't want to use Super Duper is you could use uh, Carbon Copy Cloner. Uh, that also does uh, pretty much the same thing and is another uh, really good application. So whichever one uh, works best for you, you can choose that. So I'm going to use SuperDuper uh, for our example here uh, in the screencast. So let me put this down and just pull up SuperDuper here. Now this is SuperDuper. Uh, it's a very simple interface. Uh, the nice thing about it is it tells you in plain text exactly what's going to happen. So if you ever had those times where you've put something down and you've gone, ah, is it going to do the right thing or not? You don't want to mess it up. You can actually read a paragraph here that will actually tell you what's going to happen. 
So what I've got is uh, you have a copy uh, from and to. And so what you do is you select the drive you want to copy. So in my case, it is the uh, main server hard drive. And I want to copy it to, and it is this backup drive. Now, this is just for the sake of our uh, doing this example, because uh, you'll notice already that I have less uh, space on this drive than I do on my main drive. And uh, that's okay for this uh, example. Like I said, I would recommend a drive that would be at least, uh, you know, two terabytes, maybe a little bit bigger than that. So, uh, but for the purposes of our of what we're doing here, this this works fine. Now, you want to do it using, and you can restore all files. Well, that's not quite what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to back up all files. And so these are the options of what you can do. You can back up or restore. Uh, again, you would use the restore after you've got a backup if you wanted to restore it to another drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to back up all of the files here. Uh, onto this drive. Now if you look down below here uh, you'll see that we can copy now if we want to or we have other options and so I'm just gonna uh, click on the options here just to show you what we have uh, available. So we can schedule a couple of different things. We can say before we copy, do you want to repair the permissions on the main hard drive? So you can do that so that you don't propagate any bad uh, permissions over. Again, I wouldn't check that unless you are having some problems, uh, but then again I still uh, you know, I don't, I don't see that you necessarily would need that. Uh, now, during the copy, you have a couple of different options. I can do an erase server backup and then copy the files over. So that's just a straight copy. I can do a smart update of the server. And what a smart update is, is it's basically going to copy everything over to that drive. And then from there on out, it's only going to add any changes that you've made since the last time you copied. And so this is really the one that you're going to want to use so that the backup time is a lot less. The first time you do it, it's going to be a while. The second time, though, it will speed up the process. And then you can do other things. You can copy only newer files uh, from the backup or copy different files uh, from, from server backup. But for our purposes, this smart update one is the one that we really want to use. Uh, then you can say on completion, what do you want to do with this? And you can restart this uh, from the server backup, the one that you just made. You can set um, the, the server backup disk that you just made as the startup disk. You can eject the uh, backup. You can shut down the computer, sleep it, or quit super duper. So you can do just about anything with it. Uh, I'm just going to say do nothing for right now. Uh, in this case. You also have an advanced tab here uh, where you can do a few things. You can run a shell script if you want. Uh, you can create a disk image of the backup. I mean, you've got a, a few advanced uh, uh, options here. Uh, I wouldn't worry about those. Uh, the, the basic uh, setup there is fine. All right, so we've got this. We're just going to uh, click OK. Uh, now, the other thing you can do is you can actually schedule uh, your backups. And so uh, this is probably what I would recommend, especially if you've bought a copy. Uh, you can schedule to either automatically back it up. Uh, you can copy the first, second, third, or fourth week of the month. You can pick the days you want to uh, copy it on. You can have the start copy time on when you want to have that happen. So, you know, if you want to do it at night uh, when you're in bed so that it, it's not disturbing anything, you can do that. Or, or you can do it this way, too. If you've got a drive that you're connecting or disconnecting, you can say, you know, do it when you connect... Uh, server backup. So whenever that backup drive gets connected, then then that's when it's going to come on. And you'll notice when I when I change these, it changed everything down below. You can see in, in plain text, it says when the backup is attached, it's going to back up all files to to copy server hard drive to the backup, and then it's you know it's going to be selected. And so it just tells you exactly what it's going to do. Uh, again, that's just a, a nice feature that that is really really helpful. And so if I just click OK. You'll see that it's made that schedule for me, and it's ready to set up, and it's going to do it. The next time I do it, it'll copy. I can highlight it right now, and I can say uh, copy now uh, to make that work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this down. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we've got everything set up, right? We've got it going where we want to. It's going to back up all files to this. Uh, it's going to do a smart update of my system. Again, it's going to copy this drive to this drive. So we're going to say copy now. And once you start it, it says I'm about to update uh, server backup, and I do want to do that. So I'm going to copy. And so now what happens is, is it goes and prepare, prepares uh, to copy the files. It's preparing the server backup, and then it goes through the process of starting to copy those files. And what's nice is you can see it all the way along, how, how fast the speed is, how many have been evaluated, how much has been copied, and it'll go through this. Now, it's going to take a while to make this backup, so it's not a short uh, process the first time because it is copying everything bit for bit, so it's making an exact copy. Uh, but when it's done, we'll have a, a nice uh, bootable copy of this hard drive. So I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. 
Okay, here we are. You can see that SuperDuper finished its backup. You can see it says that uh, everything copied the files. It shows you all the files that were copied. shows that everything was successful and it's made uh, the backup bootable. So it's all completed now and that just kind of gives you an idea how SuperDuper works. Uh, next, what we're going to do is take a look at one more uh, thing that we need to consider in backing up and that's our open directory. Okay, one more thing we're going to want to back up, and that is your open directory. Uh, because your open directory has all of your settings on it for all of your users and groups and uh, all of those details for your connected devices that you've bound to your server, uh, it's important to keep a backup of this because it is a database of sorts. And so just in case something gets corrupted or doesn't go well, you're going to want to be able to restore this. So what you want to do is come into the uh, open directory area here, and uh, you want to go down to the gear and just uh, click Archive Open Directory Master. And so we get this nice drop down. and what we want to do is we want to choose uh, where we want to back up this file to. And so I would suggest it's not on your uh, main server drive that you find another location for it. So we're going to click Choose. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in my, uh, in my uh, Drobo in a server backup folder. Okay, I'm going to stick it right in there. And I'm just going to call this uh, OD Backup. Okay, so I know that it's my Open Directory Backup and I'm going to uh, click Save. And so what it's going to do is it's added it in there, so it's going to make, that's where it's going to archive it, and then it asks for an archive password, and so this just needs to be a password that you can remember, and so you want to put in a password. So let me do that right now. Once you have your password in there, you click Next, and it says, okay, an archi archive is going to be created here with this archive password. So I'm just going to click Archive. And so now what it does is it starts to create uh, an archive of my Open Directory Master. You can see it shows me the progress bar here, and so it's creating that uh, on my Drobo. And uh, once that's done, then I should have a sparse image uh, backup of my open directory. So I'm going to let this run, and as soon as it's done, we'll come back and see what it looks like. Okay, so the uh, backup has completed. It's taken me right back to the screen here, and uh, everything is, you know, looks the same as it was. Uh, so let's just go check. We'll check our backup by pulling up a finder window. And so here we are, my Drobo server backup. And there is the uh, sparse image right there of my open directory. So that way I've got a nice open, uh, open directory backup. So if anything goes wrong, I can then uh, restore from that. And uh, I'll probably do a screencast that kind of details how do you restore and, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but you can see it's about a 7.5 megabyte file. Uh, but the nice thing is that I know now that I've got that backed up at this point in time and I can always get to it if I need it. And so you might want to set up some kind of routine to remind yourself to make these backups uh, you know, on a semi-regular basis. So let me just uh, put that down. So that's all I have for this week. Hopefully that helps you get started with uh, backing up your server. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.